Many financial professionals argue that machine learning and AI can't be used to develop superior investment strategies. But what if I told you that there's research proving they're wrong and that their beliefs are potentially costing them millions? In this video, I'll simplify the research and show how this can affect the way you invest. Machine learning skeptics point out that one major problem always gets in its way, and that problem is overfitting. They've argued their case in papers such as this one. Remember the name Brian Kelly because we'll see him pop up later. Let me explain what overfitting is. Machine learning models learn through trial and error. We essentially give them practice questions and tell us to guess the right answers. Unlike what human students do, we don't teach the models why an answer is correct. We let them figure that out on their own, which is why AI often lacks common sense. Learning requires memory, and different models have different capacities to remember. Simple models can only remember a few things, and because they can't remember much, they're forced to learn only the most obvious patterns that connect questions to their answers. Complex models, on the other hand, can remember lots of things. This gives them the ability to perform more sophisticated analysis, but instead of learning how to reason, complex models will often resort to memorizing the answers instead. And they'll memorize because doing so is easier than reasoning and machines are lazy just like us. When we present the models with a question they hadn't seen before, simple models will often guess reasonably, but complex models will often get lost if the question doesn't exactly match something they had memorized. Overfitting refers to this type of failure. Models built to predict the financial markets are especially prone to overfitting because the data is so noisy. For example, this chart shows the daily returns of the S&P 500. It's hard to see any discernible pattern, which further pushes models to just memorize. We can understand this because we humans have the same tendencies. I used to tutor math to university students, and when they encountered difficult concepts, they tended to want to memorize equations instead of understanding how they work. That usually led to bad grades. Noisy data are like these difficult equations or machines. They tempt models into memorizing, which causes overfitting. Many financial pros came to see overfitting like zombies and machine learning as a house full of zombies. If you enter it, you can't escape the zombies. So it's best to stay out. But what if the zombies can't actually hurt you? What if they're just a nuisance that you have to manage? That's the provoking idea behind the paper titled The Virtual Complexity in Return Prediction. It was partly authored by Brian Kelly, whom as we saw earlier, had argued that machine learning shouldn't be applied to investing. This was an important paper, so let me summarize some of his findings. First, the authors conducted an experiment. They set up a fictional stock market in which they knew exactly how prices move, and then they considered the perspective of modelers who lived in this fictional world. These modelers had data that contained clues about how stock prices moved, but these clues were imperfect. They were like pieces of manuscripts that told us where the treasure is, but in an ancient language. This is similar to the conditions we find ourselves in the world today. We don't really know what drives market, we just have some clues. Going back to the experiment, the authors created models of different levels of complexities. Some models were underparameterized, meaning these models didn't have enough memory to memorize all of the training data, while other models were overparameterized. These had enough memory to memorize all the training data many times over. In other words, they were guaranteed to overfit. Notice that I used the same pictures to talk about simple and complex models. That was intentional. Underparameterized models are simple, and overparameterized models are complex. We use those terms interchangeably. The authors trained models of these various complexities and used their outputs to simulate the investment returns. And what they found was surprising. First, the expected returns were highest for the over-parameterized model. Concentrate on the purple line for now. We'll talk about the other lines later. As you can see, expected returns rose as models got more complex. Second, the authors found that the volatility of the investment returns were highest for the slightly overparameterized models, but lower for both under and overparameterized models. I'll spare you the reason why this phenomenon occurs in this video, because it's technical, but feel free to ask in the comments if you're curious. Because of these results, the Sharpe ratios were highest for overparameterized models. You can think of the Sharpe ratio as the average return divided by volatility, and it's what professional investors often use to decide what to invest in. This meant that overparameterized parameterized models had the best performance. But if this is the case, why did other academics hate on overparameterized models? As it turns out, they were using the wrong metric to evaluate models. Statisticians generally use R square to evaluate how good predictions are. A score of one is perfect, zero is terrible, and negative values are like worse than terrible. The R squared of overparameterized models are really, really bad. And when modelers saw these super low R squared, they gave up and said simple models are the best. But as the authors point out using some 
painfully complicated math, R squared doesn't necessarily translate into investment performance. Moreover, the author showed that much of the nasty effects of overfitting could be managed through regularization. You can think of regularization like guardrails that keep people from doing dangerous things. For regularization, that danger is overfitting. You can use different strengths of regularization, and the different colors we saw in the graph earlier are the results of using these different strengths. Overall, using stronger regularization led to higher sharp ratios. So those modelers who didn't try regularization probably missed out on the potential of complex models. In summary, the authors of this paper found that using the most over-parameterized model paired with the strongest regularization led to the highest investment performance. But if you remember, this analysis was all done in the fictional world that the authors created. Would over-parameterized models work in the real world? It's a good question. To answer it, the authors created models that predicted the actual US stock market. To show the power of over-parameterized models, they decided to use input data from a paper that said the data was ineffective for predicting the stock market, at least when used in simple models. When the authors used that same data with very over-parameterized models and combined it with strong regularization, they were able to devise strategies that delivered high sharp ratios and other desirable performance metrics. Interestingly, the strategy seemed especially good at sensing recessions before they started and reducing risk beforehand. This result proved that very complex models can be practically useful in the real world. The implications of this paper are huge. Most models used for investing today are simple, but this paper suggests that we should be able to improve on most of them by using more complex models. Funds that use these more complex models should theoretically be able to generate higher returns for taking on the same amount of risk. And if those models can generate 2% per year higher returns on a million dollar portfolio, the difference could amount to over $4 million after the 30th year. But there is one caveat, and I'm talking as someone who's built a lot of models. You can't just try any complex model and expect to get great results. The structure of the model needs to make sense and that structure must depend on the problem you're trying to solve. The authors of the paper found one way to structure the model to get the most out of the data set and that structure was called random Fourier theory. The structure won't work for every problem and finding a suitable structure is an art that requires a lot of experience. Now you might be wondering if there's a way to utilize a model shown in the paper and in fact there is. Kelly and a few others started a fund that uses this model and many other models that came out of his research. And so far, their real money results have held up pretty well. I hope this video helped you understand the debate surrounding the financial machine learning today. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to get more insights like this. See you next time. Authors showed that much of the nasty effects of overfitting could be managed to regularly uh, while other models while other models were over uh while other models were over parameterized. Uh, these terms are hard to pronounce.